Tesla is not the only company with dry electrode manufacturing experience, and LG is about to start production of their own battery electrodes using a dry process that they have been developing for 10 years. Follow along as I discuss what I've uncovered about LG's dry battery electrode manufacturing technology, including information from an LG Energy Solution patent application that I found as well. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. LG Energy Solution currently supplies 2170 batteries to Tesla, and they're about to begin manufacturing 4680 batteries at a factory in South Korea as well, which I'm pretty certain that Tesla will be purchasing these batteries as well. So if a Tesla supplier like LG is able to produce batteries more efficiently and at a lower cost, this will benefit Tesla. And I also found it interesting that LG had been working on this technology for some time now. While LG's current battery production utilizes a standard wet manufacturing process for their electrodes, according to an Automotive News Europe article, LG has been working on a dry manufacturing process for 10 years. And as I will discuss near the end of this video, they should be starting pilot production of these cells quite soon. However, commercialization is still a few years off, so Tesla is ahead of them in this regard. Nonetheless, I wanna dive into some more information about their battery technology, starting with that Automotive News Europe article. As far as I know, Tesla is the only company that has commercialized a battery with at least one of the electrodes manufactured with a dry process with their Cybercell at least having anodes manufactured with a dry electrode process. And there is a possibility that the cathodes in those batteries are as well, as I've talked about in past videos, but I'm not 100% certain on that just yet. It's kind of iffy if Tesla is actually manufacturing the cathodes in their batteries with a dry process. I'm leaning towards no, not yet, but there is some indication that they may possibly be doing that. We'll know more about that in the future. But nonetheless, I would rank Tesla as the leader in the dry electrode manufacturing process. But interestingly, the chief technology officer at LG Energy Solutions believes that not Tesla, but LG is actually the top of competitors when it comes to dry electrode manufacturing technology. In this article, it's written, quote, among battery competitors, LG is the top in terms of dry coating technology. Kim Jae Young, who became LG Energy Solutions Chief Technology Officer in December said in an exclusive interview with Bloomberg News at the company's headquarters in Seoul. We started 10 years ago. Maybe the fact that LG was working on dry electrode manufacturing technology was something that showed up in the news in years past, but I've never come across it. And so I was actually really interested that they were not only working on this process, but they had been working on this for 10 years. That actually surprised me. I didn't know that LG Energy Solution had been working on this technology, especially for that long. Now, of course, one of the big reasons why this technology is so exciting is because it's a much more efficient way to manufacture the electrodes in a battery. And according to this article, quote, Kim estimates the dry method can lower battery manufacturing costs by between 17% to 30%. So LG's method can apparently save them at least 17%. And when it comes to how this actually compares to Tesla's estimate that they gave back at battery day as to how much their dry process would save them based on the cost per kilowatt hour of reduction that they actually listed during that battery day presentation, for the cell factory itself, which includes more than just the dry process, but it definitely encompasses the dry process, they estimated that the cell factory alone would save around 18% of the cost per kilowatt hour. Now notice that the cell design and the anode and cathode materials are listed separately there. So I believe that the majority of that 18% savings there when it comes to the cell factory, I believe most of that has to do with the dry electrode manufacturing process. So it looks like LG's dry electrode manufacturing process is something that will save them at least as much as Tesla estimated and possibly even more than Tesla's estimates. Now in quite a few of my past videos, I've discussed how Tesla has had trouble manufacturing cathodes with their dry electrode manufacturing process. And I never had all the details on why the cathode was specifically more difficult, but one potential reason for that is explained in this article. Making the cathode with dry processing is more difficult than the anode because cathodes tend to be made from materials that are harder to handle, experts say. 
based on information that I received from one of my sources in the past. It looks like if you are manufacturing anodes, battery anodes, you don't have to wear quite as much PPE in the anode manufacturing space. But when it comes to the spaces where they manufacture cathodes, you pretty much have to be in a full suit that is airtight from what I understand because the cathode materials are a lot more dangerous if they come in contact with human skin and I imagine breathing in the particles, etc. is a lot bigger deal than the anode materials. So that does make a lot of sense there. But there is an additional reason beyond that also mentioned in this article. This article goes on to make clear that LG's dry electrode manufacturing process can be applied to both cathodes and anodes. And that quote, applying dry electrode manufacturing to cathodes with smaller size particles is very challenging. Nonetheless, since Tesla has struggled, it will be interesting to see if LG also struggles when it actually comes to manufacturing these batteries on a massive scale in the future when they actually commercialize this technology. It will be interesting, but nonetheless, it looks like at least right now that they appear confident that their dry process will work on the cathode as well. Now I'll talk about when LG plans to actually commercialize this technology in the future near the end of the video. But first, before I do that, I wanna dive into some details about LG's technology here based on information that I found in an LG Energy Solution patent application about this technology. Back in April of this year, this patent application was published entitled Dry Electrode Manufacturing Method and Dry Electrode Manufacturing System. And you can see the applicant there is LG Energy Solution Limited. Just as Tesla's process does not involve solvents, according to this application, LG does not need to use solvents in their dry manufacturing process as well. In addition, the real basic description of how this process works seems like it's somewhat similar to Tesla's process. I'm sure there are differences because Tesla has their IP protected, so LG is not just directly copying them. But nonetheless, the process seems similar, basically taking the active electrode materials, mixing some kind of binder with that, and then coating an electrode surface and then pressing those onto an electrode foil. And once again, that basic process, that sounds very similar to Tesla's method. Beyond that, this application actually opens the door for LG using some kind of tabless battery technology as well. Specifically in this application, it's written, quote, the above mentioned collector includes a bare portion having an exposed surface without forming a primer layer, electrode active layer, on all or part of an edge, and the bare portion can be used as an electrode tab by itself or can have a separate electrode tab connected thereto. So once again, when you look at how that's written there, they mention that the edge, the bare edge of the electrode that does not get coated with the active electrode material or the primer, that exposed edge can actually be used as the electrode tab itself. And that's basically what Tesla does with their tabless technology or with their multi-flag technology. Basically the edge of the electrode that is not actually coated with the active material, that gets laser cut, folded over, and serves the same function as a battery tab. So while the wording did include a traditional battery tab option as well, it's interesting that LG might be trying to develop a tabless technology as well. Nonetheless, moving on, this patent application also mentions another advantage of the dry process, and I believe this is just the dry process in general, and it's written here, quote, a dry electrode manufactured by a dry manufacturing method has the advantage of having a uniform distribution of binder resin in the thickness direction of the electrode active material layer and fewer defects such as pinholes or cracks compared to a slurry coating method. However, despite that advantage, there is a downside with this technology that's also mentioned in this patent application. And this application goes on, quote, however, when applying the electrode powder onto the current collector, the electrode powder may flow down from the edge of the electrode active material layer or protrude from the edge of the electrode active material layer when pressurized, resulting in an uneven finish on the side surface. Therefore, there is an urgent need to develop a dry electrode manufacturing technology that can solve these problems. Now, one optional method that is mentioned in this application is taking a laser or some kind of knife and making that edge straight and fixing that edge. But this patent application actually gives a much better solution and gives a better solution to this problem by creating a dam that actually holds in that active material as it's being pressed onto the electrode foil. This application goes on, 
Figures 3A and 3B are schematic diagrams showing the side and top views respectively of an electrode having a dam provided on both ends of the width of a primer layer provided on one surface of a current collector in a dry electrode manufacturing method according to one embodiment of the present invention. Here are figures 3A and 3B that are referenced in this application and you can see there 121 that represents that dam that helps keep those active materials exactly where they should be. And if you go down to the other following figures, the two figures below, you can see they have a diagram there of those active materials being pressed in that bottom one and staying within the zone there created by that dam. Now, when it comes to what kind of material this dam would be made of, this application goes on. In one embodiment of the present invention, the dam may include at least one of an insulating polymer material and an inorganic material. And then the application goes on to list a number of options for that insulating layer. But nonetheless, the idea of a dam to kind of keep everything in place is an interesting solution. And I'm not sure if Tesla is also having this problem with their dry process that as they press that down, if they're having trouble keeping it exactly where it needs to be without it going over the edge there, that may be something that Tesla has dealt with as well. But this is an interesting solution to that problem that LG has put forth. I've talked about this in past videos, but as far as I understand, Tesla is still using a PTFE binder for their dry process. That PTFE, or that's the chemical name for the brand name, Teflon, that PTFE is what helps bind the active materials together, and then that holds it together as it gets pressed onto the electrode foil. That's what I believe Tesla is using, at least on the anode side and very likely on the cathode side as well. And it looks like LG is also potentially using a PTFE binder as well as mentioned here, but that may only be used on the anode side. It looks like when it comes to the cathode side, they're actually using a different kind of binder. On the cathode side, it looks like they're going to use a diene polymer and a styrene polymer and not PTFE. Now, before the powders can actually be pressed onto the electrode foil, it looks like you actually need to put down a primer layer first. And this application goes on to describe using a binder resin on the electrode foil before the active material is pressed onto that. And then when it comes to the description of the actual applying the powder to the electrode foil, it's written, quote, Referring to figure seven, a current collector having a primer layer and a dam formed thereon is supplied to a dry electrode manufacturing process by a roll to roll continuous process and electrode powder is supplied to the surface of the primer layer through an electrode powder feeder. Here's figure seven that's referenced in that description. And once again, this process appears to be somewhat similar to Tesla's process. I know there are some differences but the basic method is very similar to what Tesla is doing. Now, beyond the process of adhering the electrode powders onto the electrode foil, this patent application also goes on to describe how they mix the binders and the active materials together to form that powder that is pressed on to the electrode foil. I don't know the exact process that Tesla uses to mix the PTFE binder with the active electrode materials when they make that. And maybe it's somewhat similar or maybe it's completely different. But in this application, the process is described as basically involving mixing the binders with the active materials there with either water or some kind of solvent or additional additives. Then that slurry is sprayed or atomized into hot air and dries into the powder that they use. That powder may also be subject to going through a drying oven as well, but this is not to be confused with a dry process of actually adhering this to that electrode foil. That's still a dry process and it's very possible that Tesla uses a somewhat similar method when it comes to manufacturing the powders that they use, mixing the binders together with those active materials. Tesla may use a wet process for that as well. I'm not really sure, but that is a possibility. If you know about that, please um, let us know down in the comment section below about that. Now, just to be clear here, this is not the same as Tesla's factory that they're building at Gigafactory Texas, where they're going to be manufacturing active cathode materials. That method that they're using there, I believe, is just for the active cathode materials not yet mixed with the binder at that stage. Maybe they're doing that all in one step. But in the past, when Tesla purchased technology from Spring Power for a much more efficient way to manufacture the active cathode materials, 
I don't believe that necessarily has anything to do with this mixing the binder with the active materials. I believe that's a separate process. But nonetheless, if you have information about how Tesla mixes that binder in with the active materials and if that's a wet process or what that involves, let us know it down in the comment section below or email me. My email address is john at cleanerwatt.com, J-O-N at cleanerwatt.com. I'd be curious to know if you have more information on that. Nonetheless, LG's dry electrode manufacturing process is intriguing. And when it comes to when they actually plan to commercialize this technology, going back to that Automotive News Europe article, in that article it was written, quote, LG plans to complete a pilot production line for its dry coating process in the fourth quarter and start full-scale production in 2028, Kim said. It's the first time LG has disclosed a timeline for commercializing the technology. So if all goes well, it looks like by the end of this year, LG will start pilot production of their dry process. And that's going to be interesting to see how that actually plays out. And more than likely, they will come across problems just as Tesla did when it comes to going beyond pilot production to mass manufacturing. But it looks like they are giving themselves a realistic timeline. Not only have they been working on this technology for 10 years, as mentioned previously, but they're saying they're gonna commercialize it in 2028. So they're giving themselves some time. They may beat that or it may even take longer than that. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.